Okay, so, how's it going? I saw something on the X Christian subreddit, one of my favorite subreddits, of course, and there was one post that stuck out to me, and I really wanted to do a video, so I commented to the OPS, said, hey, are you fine with me posting a video with this in it? I can blank out your name if you need, yada this, yada that. They said they were cool with it, and I'm sorry it took so long to get to it finally, but here it is. Newly minted atheist looking for advice. It's been about a week since I, 24, a female, fully rejected the idea of Christianity. Congratulations. I was raised in a Nazarene house, household and I gave my life to Jesus at the age of three. My mom and dad were both pastors at one point and I was in church every time the doors were open. I've had doubts for over five years, but I spent the majority of that time trying to convince myself that God was real because I didn't want to face what would happen if I did leave the church. And that fear that keeps you locked into belief, it's very real to people who didn't grow up religious, that idea that uh, and not even going into the idea that you may be wrong, that, that's even further, and that's an even far more frightening thing that happens when you are starting to come to realizations that you might not buy into this sort of thing anymore. It's, very, it's a very hard thing to overcome. Over time, however, I began to notice more and more of the inconsistencies in doctrine and the hurtful teachings of the church. I finally decided that I can't do this so more, or can't do this anymore. If God is real, he shouldn't be this difficult to find. And... I can definitely relate to, I mean, of course, <laughs> both ex-Christians. He shouldn't be this difficult to find. I don't know if you can relate to this, but one of the things that was so mind-numbingly aggravating was trying to find God or you start getting into your doubts and you're like, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure this out. I'm going to prove that God's real. I'm going to really look into this rather than just taking it in. I don't know if you went through that, like I said, but it that or something similar to that will mostly turn into you being very disappointed in other believers and Christians when you try to find like really good answers. You might have known somebody that's like real deep in the word and they always have the greatest answers, but when you're in that doubt phase and when you're actually taking evidence and reason and logic as it should be, it becomes very aggravating, very disappointing when you're like, why does this say this? Why is this inconsistency here? Why does Judas die this way at this place and this time, but in this verse, it's completely contradictory. It's completely the opposite. Instead of the answers you get being, you know, actually worthy of an explanation, you get excuses that are just bad. And when you hear this, you almost wish that they would have just said, you know, that that is an inconsistency, like how you are in your head. But they don't. They make some really bad, shitty excuse. Like, you know, Judas being hung versus the scriptures where Judas fell off a cliff or fell onto a hill or something like that and his guts bursted up open. Sometimes you'll hear, well, both happened. He hung himself and fell. And then his guts and intestines and stomach blew open. But that doesn't also explain the part where he buys the field, what the field is named, and like there's there's so many other inconsistencies. But just judging by the post so far, this is this is where it all starts. Now that I'm an atheist, there's several things that I don't know how to address. If anyone has advice on any of these points, I would appreciate it. Number one, I'm angry. I feel betrayed by my church and my family who taught me several damaging lives. Lies. I have never really let myself feel angry before because my church teaches that only God is allowed to be angry. Is there a constructive way to deal with this? Yes, there are ways and it's honestly different for everybody. I can give you what I do, but you know, you will have to find your own way or get help from a therapist or a psychologist because what works for me, and to be honest, quite frankly, doesn't really work all the time. It kind of morphs. During my more of my anger phase and my angry phases, I express myself through here on these videos, through posts on ex-Christianity, whether I was commenting and helping somebody all out or just talking with somebody, or, you know, going with talking with somebody, talking to a very close loved one or a friend that you can kind of come out about. And this can be really hard, especially when all you have are Christian friends, because as much as they're trying to sympathize or empathize, I forget which one, with you, they don't quite get it enough to be that warm help that you need, if that makes sense. Now, I want to mention something that uh, might be a little counter productive or counterintuitive to uh, what I just mentioned, and I think I do mention this later on in the video, so I want to say it now. Um, let your Christian friends be there for you. Now, 
you're going to have to be the judge of if you should listen to that or not because sometimes it can make it worse, a lot worse. But if all you have are Christian friends, and I've been in that position before, let them be the help, even if they don't get it. I mean, know that they're trying. Know that it's it's genuine. It could it could be a whole lot worse. Um, you know, I don't know if inside their head they would just be, you know, bullshitting. I mean, you should know that if you're well enough friends with them. Um, I'll mention my stepfather for a moment. Um, he is a theist. He's a Christian. He's definitely not like he's not like the other Christians, but. I'd say that I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't be as healthy mentally and as accepting of myself uh, and my non-belief if I didn't have the help that I received from him, from that Christian man. And uh, I think I think merit is uh, deserved where it's due. So if you do only have Christian friends, um, it may be best for the time being to let them help you. You've always got someone like me, someone like other people that responded to you on X Christian, there's community here. You've you've got community at the end of the day. But if you buck and fight and completely shatter relationships that you'd once had, you completely flip around. And sometimes it's hard to it's hard to look at those people the same way, especially if you already know some of their bigoted views or some of the things that they think or said about things. People can always change and sometimes you opening up as a non believer can actually help them understand like, hey, you know, maybe maybe my thinking isn't the best. Maybe I should change this about something I think or how I feel about somebody. I mean, you see this all the time when, like, a homophobic family as a gay person come out in the family or a trans person, and all of a sudden, they're a little bit more accepting of it. So allow this process to happen, and you will have to be the judge of when it is too toxic to continue. But I don't want to just say, oh, you know, they, they can only help so much. You know, I understand that feeling where they get it, but they don't get it. But I also want to mention that it is a good thing, and it has been a good thing in my path so far, to let those Christians who may not understand completely, if they're trying to help, let them help. Because there are a lot of people who have gotten treated like shit when they probably wish that they could have had a friend who was a Christian, who just accepted them and was there for them through the process, and didn't try to necessarily change them either. But back to the video. I feel betrayed by my church and my family who taught me several damaging lies. This can be one of the most painful things because you feel intellectually ripped off. You feel you feel duped. I, I felt the same way when I was a flat earther. Um, I felt really stupid. I still feel stupid about it, but I'm just glad I'm not a flat earther anymore. And it was because of my... Christian evangelical nature and mentality and perspective on my worldview that turned me into a flat earther. And so I had wished, honestly, I had realized the ills and pains and evils that was my religion that caused me to become a flat earther. But it wasn't until many, many years later that that happened. And you, it's really, it just pisses you the fuck off, you know? Like, even though you can grow up and you can have your own ideas about God and you kind of, like, break off from that indoctrination and, like, constant repetition of church. Well, some adults do, some adults don't. Meh. When you're grown up to think and do and believe a certain way and you're kind of scared to break those bounds, once you finally do, you're going to be angry and you have every fucking right to be. You know, only God can be angry. Oh, God, I can only remember that. Don't judge, you know, just, just, just be, just, just deal with this. Know that God is good and God is just. Let God be the one to anger. Let his righteous anger, fit. like, you know, you've heard it all before. And that gets into your head. And so then you get out of the religion and you want to, you want to be angry. You want to be angry at, at the God. The Christians think, but you're not actually angry at the God because you don't believe that God exists. You're angry at the situation. And it can become more frustrating when you hear things like, you're just mad at God. <sighs> that one, that one, ooh, that one hits me in a tight spot. Um, just because of the situation that it's been brought up in. And that might be a story for a later time. But some, something else I wanted to say, though, was, you know, you can leave 
the religion and you want to be angry but you're taught you you're in that mentality of like you can't be angry you're so used to suppressing it and suppressing emotions and your even your sexuality i know people who have left christianity and they still feel bad they f still feel that inner turmoil and self-disgust of having sex with a partner that they just might not be married to yet you know it it's it's damaging and people like you and me are 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 really tired of that being normal, of people not realizing the negative effects that come with this. I'm tired of people acting like it's just this benefit to society, it helps humans, yet ignore so many of the negative side effects that come with it. You know, think about how Christians look at cigarettes or alcohol even, or just anything, like even certain types of music. If they just took that eye and looked at their own religion and worldview, which it's hard to, I mean, how beliefs work, it kind of blinds you. You have shaders on. They leave in an instant. But I want to move on to the next one before I go on too much of a tangent. Number two, I'm lonely. Again, this is a new experience for me. I have one friend who is not a Christian, so I haven't been able to tell many people about this. The other day I was alone in my house and it hit me that I was really, truly alone. As much, and I'm gonna pause here for a second. As much as I wanna say, you know, you're not alone. I have come to not really liking saying that, wow, that was a jumble. I don't really like to say that anymore because to people who are truly alone, um, when some stranger, some other idiot on the internet tells you, you know, you're not, you have all of us, you have this, you have that. It seems a little naive to know, you know, meanwhile, you, you are actually alone. And while I don't want to encourage that negativity and like most people, they want to go the opposite and kind of reassure you and enforce you that, you know, no, you are not alone. I don't want to necessarily say that because this is an important part of leaving religion. You start to realize, and maybe not you in these ways, but other people have realized that there are so many facets of their life that depend on this religion. Like how much of a core grasp hold this thing has on everybody, on humanity, society as a whole. We live in a society. But I, re I, re I really do get that. It hit me that I was really, truly alone. And what's worse is that and I've mentioned this in other videos and I might bring up more deeper on like what I mean, but you know, you might come out and you might be with family who are Christian and you have differing opinions and they may have sick fucking twisted views or they might be kind of like liberal Christian, like pretty okay. But at the end of the day, when it comes to your non-belief in atheism, I guarantee you most of the time you're expected to sit in the corner, and shut the fuck up about it. And that's the worst part about it. Anybody can easily under their breath mention God doing something in their life or well, thank God for end times or this and that and you know We're supposed to brush it over But yet, you know, if you might say something back it'd be like, yeah, I don't know That's kind of crazy or you know You have an opinion about something or even you just even just bringing up a specific verse that somebody might not like it's Like why do you bring this up? Why do you care about religion so much? Sit in the corner and shut the fuck up and you may not have come across that point yet, but or come across that situation, but I do know there's a lot of people that definitely feel that, especially around the holiday season. And while you don't always bring up religion, it just happens. You get around the family and, you know, trigger warning for language coming up, but you'll get around family and they're, they're pissed at all these faggots. What do you do? Do you roll over it? Sometimes you do, sometimes you have to, or do you say something? Saying something doesn't usually help. It feels better. It feels good to know, like, hey, I stood up for this. I stood up for what I believe in just like they do. But at the end of the day, when you say it, it leaves a bad taste in everybody's mouth. And maybe even your own. Because you're expected to sit in a corner and shut the fuck up. Now... I don't want to get you down. Not all experiences are like this, but I, I'm going to get on another tangent, so I've got to get back. There was no Holy Spirit in the room, no God listening in on every thought. The thought was terrifying, and it triggered a panic attack. And I've never felt this way before, and I don't know what to do with these new emotions. I don't know if you are a social person, but in times 
when you feel like that, it, it is best to get out. Go meet up. Go meet up with somebody you haven't seen in a while. Go treat yourself to something. Is there like an ice skating rink near your near your residence, wherever you live? Never tried it. Like, yeah, fuck it, I'll try it. Like, go, go try new things. One great, th- amazing thing about realizing you are no longer a Christian and you're not held by the bounds of a limited theology and and a moral and bigoted worldview of people, situations, music, and even TV shows and art. The greatest thing is that a lot of people get to this, well, now what? The thing is, is anything. Actually, not anything, obviously. In case any snarky apologists want to comment and be like, oh, anything, anything. I knew that atheists ate babies and supported bestiality. You can do anything without a God. Obviously, that's not where I'm going. What did you always want to do that you just felt completely shitted on in Christianity for doing? Do you want to do you want to try alcohol for the first time? You ever had whiskey? I knew that uh, at a certain time I thought it was even bad to cook with wine and different alcohols because of how much alcohol was demonized in my childhood. And I still even feel negative just drinking it from time to time whenever I do. It's, it causes that much problems later on. And it's not just religion that does this, but hey, this is a religious talk. So before anybody's like, well, it's not just, it's not just religion that does it. I, I understand. I get it. I do have a lot of Christian viewers. And, you know, I did, <laughs> the other week, uh, somebody, <laughs> somebody thought this was a Christian channel. And, like, they'd commented a bunch. And then they delete all their comments. And then left a comment. And it's like, well, I feel stupid now because, you know... I feel like, I, I, I guess I was talking shit about Christianity and it, it felt stupid. I get that bewittling and things like that don't really feel good. And I did apologize. Um, I don't really like that it's that way, but hey, you know, it's what I'm passionate about. You know, the ills and the evils that come from this are not as bad as me talking a little bit shit. Me pointing out the fucked up parts that people don't really want to focus on. But uh, you don't know you don't know what to do with these new emotions. So number two. Okay, let me let me go over okay, let me go over number one real fast. <laughs> We're going back to one. Is there a constructive way to deal with this, the anger? Ooh, it's gonna be one way or the other. And I guess technically when it comes to Reddit, there's only two options. View it or don't view it. Um for a time being, spending time on X Christian helped me kind of direct where my anger was going and not really explode on certain people in certain times and just bottling it up it, like it, it it just it helped but then it came to a time where it's like i gotta take a break from next christian i've got to take a break from all of it all the religion all that shit and that's why i'll sometimes take breaks from this channel because i mean i sometimes i need it but when it comes to that anger I would, I would talk to a therapist or a very close friend that, that's going to understand. Not the people that they, they want to understand, but they just can't. You're going to want to talk to people that understand. Talk with people on ex-Christian. But if seeing a lot of things like that or being on Facebook where people are posting stupid shit about the war on Christmas, but yet they're the same people that, like, you know, they, they, they think it's bad that people say ho- happy holidays and it's oppressing them. You're, and I read a post today from one of my family members. It was like, I'm being oppressed. Us Christians, they're taking Christ out of our Christmas. And what about offending us? Nobody cares about offending us. But meanwhile, they think that gays shouldn't be allowed to get married or something else like that. It's ridiculous. But it's all about focusing. What are you focusing your energy on? That anger, where is it stemming from? And why are you angry about it? Is it sexual in nature? Does it have to do with a relationship within your family? Does it... Are you, are you just mad at yourself? And that's another thing. People don't realize it's very okay to be angry at yourself. While it also isn't necessarily your fault, while it can be our fault sometimes for what we did when we did believe or how we thought when we did believe, it's okay to be upset at yourself. It's not very productive. I don't think it should get to the point where it is like a self-loathing, like, you know, oh, woe is me, disgusting sinner level. I mean, we just get out, we just got out of that. We got out of that religion. But it, it makes sense. The anger makes sense. Just... What are, you, what are you putting it towards? Are you an artist? Do you... 
you take that anger and like convert it into you know painting or organizing or crafting a as simple as a birdhouse or something or a mirror frame you know crafting is a great hobby and that anger that passion could be turned into great art so a lot of people do especially when they make music something i used to do whenever i made music but that's number one's help number two's help what to do with the emotions the loneliness maybe you need to reflect and be alone for a minute or what i think i think you need to you need to find somebody you need to find people you need to go out and do something and kind of like this is a refreshing moment and i think it should be acted upon as such at the end of the day number three i'm grieving every time someone close to me passed away i was consoled by the thought of seeing them in heaven now I know there is no verified reason to believe in an afterlife, so I'm grieving the loss of the hope that I will ever see those people again. This can be a fucking painful one. While I haven't gone through that, luckily, the first funeral I went to was after I left the religion and became a non-believer. And I also was a skeptic, so I didn't really believe in afterlife. Because you still can be an atheist and believe in an afterlife. But strangely enough, out of everybody in the family, even as an atheist, the funeral hit me the hardest. Um, and I wasn't absolutely that close with the family member. It could have been with well, it could have been side effects of what I was dealing with at the time. It was during that time in my life where I posted the video called Lost and Found, and you see me in an empty room as I was leaving my apartment. And a lot of a lot of things were going down at the time. But it didn't seem to hit all the Christians as much. And I knew why. They were gonna see them again. They would be looking over them. They're looking over them right now. Even though in the Bible, technically, nobody just goes straight up to heaven. Everybody sleeps until, you know, Jesus returns and then everybody in Christ rises up. But either way, I digress. They think they're going to see them again. And while, yeah, you can still be sad that they're, they're dead, while also thinking about seeing them again, when you're somebody who doesn't believe in an afterlife and it's like, this is it, you see the body, you kiss their forehead or hold their hand, it's... It's over. That's that's one of the that's one of the hardest parts. But it's the greatest part when it comes to grieving. Because you're actually able to grieve the loss as a loss and not this halfway loss that Christians deal with, but I'm gonna see them one day. And what's worse is when you have to deal with both when you have loved ones pass and you think you're going to see them again it's world shattering and then on top of that you you leave the religion or you just don't believe in heaven or an afterlife it's you, you are convinced that this is it this is the last time you have to relive all those deaths over again and not just at once you can just randomly be someday you're just thinking about it and you just re-go over it that's something I I'm grateful that I don't get to experience but I absolutely hate that some atheists have to go through I've listened to, if any of you atheists out there have watched the Atheist Experience, there's a specific call, and you might know which one I'm talking about. It's one that's been on a good number of clips and has been watched enough, but there's a woman who's kind of questioning and this and that, and I don't even think they're talking about the death and the afterlife, but she just, in the mid-call, just breaks down crying. Because she's like, kind of, I think she's like realizing, like, okay, I get that there's no evidence for this and this and that, and then she's, she start, she's starting to get on that critical thinking train with her religion. And then she breaks down and it's kind of out of nowhere. And she's like, you know, I, I always thought I would be able to see my little sister again. And that episode hits pretty hard. 
because that that shit sucks and I wish I wish I had some advice for that but rather than sitting up here and pushing something that's like some stereotypical advice I was like yeah you can try this you know what I don't know I'd rather just say that I don't really know how to deal with that that's like professional level help that you would need that's somebody in the family that feels that with you if you have that that would be the most help number four I'm seen as a leader in my church I run a program for youth teach the Wednesday night preschool class play in the orchestra and I'm on a committee tasked with hiring a new youth pastor I can't continue to be a part of the church for much longer because by doing so I would be living a lie However, if I start to back out of these responsibilities, people will be one suspicious. People will be suspicious. You're absolutely right. That's a that's a fucked situation right there. So let's say you don't really want to look suspicious, but it, it just feels incongruent internally to be there while also having the worldview that you may have now or the disbelief or not saying that atheism is a worldview. I mean, the worldview can have a... Uh, that's a whole other topic for another day, but... Like you said, feel like living a lie. Um, if you just can't get out right now without it looking suspicious or, you know, another part of me would be like, who gives a fuck? Fuck that shit. Dip the hell out. You know, go out with a bang. If it were me and I felt incongruent for staying, I would I would take being a leader in the church a, a very special opportunity and important role. In the, in the development of, you know, these children, the youth, you know? Now, while I'm not basically saying, like, hey, go in and teach them that God's a fucking bitch, you know? You could go in and teach them values and, uh, for, and virtues that matter that they don't really get touched on in church. Maybe that'll make people suspicious of you, but maybe that'll do something good. Maybe them seeing a Christian who's showing these other virtues might cause them to question might cause them to reflect on themselves and go exactly through which you went in. By the way, I apologize for the sound in the background. If y'all can hear that, there's uh, people leaf blowing. But I would take that as an opportunity. If you, if you are trying to stay for just a little bit and like kind of, if you're trying to find like your way out, but you also feel like you're living a lie, I would take that as an opportunity and f feel good about it. <clears throat> feel good about it. Be a role in those children's lives that you weren't able to as a believer and a leader in the church you know cap capitalize on this basically if you desire if you don't i mean at the end of the day do it do it do what you do what you do you know you gotta do what you do at the end of the day if you don't do what you do are you even really doing what you do five i'm going to need to come out at some point not only am i an atheist but i'm also asexual a trait which was praised when i was in high school but is looked down on now that i'm a young adult don't you love the fucking irony? Oh, don't have sex, but now you're an adult. Why aren't you having sex? But it's not just sex. It's also, you know, having that sexual attraction to somebody or a partner. You know, you're coming to Thanksgiving and you're you're becoming an adult now, and you're not you're not bringing a hubby or a or a wifey or whatever you know your fucking religious family says, and then you start being viewed as off. You're something's off with you. You know. It ain't right. Hold on. I said, hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. I love, I love the fucking hypocrisy in that one. Several members of my extended family have asked when I'm going to find a guy. Oh, ding dong. There, there we go. And I don't ever want to find a guy. The main barrier of my coming out is that I live with my aunt. I'm not financially stable enough to move out yet. And if she decides to kick me out, I'm screwed. I don't know how or when or to whom to come out. I know that when I do, people are going to be confused and upset and hurt, but if I stay in the closet, I'm going to be miserable. How do I decide when to come out and how to do it? And until then, how do I continue to pretend to be an allosexual Christian without going insane? Any advice or anecdotes you are willing to give me are all appreciated. All right, so the most important thing I want to hit for, for number five. Um, I'm not financially stable enough to move out yet, and if she decides to kick me out, I'm screwed. I don't know how or when or to whom to come out. I do know when I do that people are going to be okay. Yeah. Regardless of the financial stability, 
when it comes okay my mind's trying to go three ways at the same time one at a time brain one at a time when it comes to being screwed if you come out you know what you hear most and what you probably got in the comment section of that post was you know wait off a little bit you know if you're going to be homeless by coming out to a partner in your case an aunt or your parents or you know whatever because i'm also making this video for others who may happen to be going through these things because i do i do see people who go through these things a lot i mean it's pretty that's why i'm going to make a video i was like you know what this got a lot of good stuff but i don't know whom to come out see there's that confusing part and you're going to deal with that and you mentioned about you know if you stay in the closet you're going to be miserable have you thought about the possibility that you might be miserable even after you come out? And as negative as that is, it's something I think that should be considered. Because some people do come out and shit's fucked. <laughs> shit's really fucked. What I would do personally and what I sort of did, and I'm still in the closet in some ways with some family members, wait, wait a year, wait a couple years, you know, get, stand your you know, get rooted, get grounded in your new self, that you're, you're basically a new self. I mean, having your God belief stripped from you, is a big thing. It changes a lot. It changes how you view people, how you do things, how you view, how you view life. Because a God view goes directly into a worldview. God made the world. God wants this, whip it. God wants you to do this. God does not like this. God wants me to do this. God wants me to kill you. God wants me to go over and kill these people. You know, I mean, fuck, it's even in the Bible. But I would wait, especially because this whole situation and everything that you're going through is so wild right now. Coming out may only add more chaos to that. And you don't want to do something that you regret. You can always come out, but you can never go back in. I would definitely wait it out you know, learn to sort with your your anger, like you were saying earlier, your loneliness, those things. So then once you do come out, if your family's like, fuck you, bitch, or wants to, you know, wants to kick you to the curb, it doesn't hit as hard. It's not as, like, soul-knocking, so to speak. You know, you've got a support group. You've got a support system. You've got your head right, you know? I think those are the things that should be focused on now rather than coming out. Because some people can hyper-focus on coming out. They need to come out. They feel that it's necessary. They don't feel right f faking it, living a lie. I don't see it that way. I see it that you're basically strong-armed to being in this crazy, kind of gatless, gaslit experience of, like, needing to come out. And then also, like, you can't come out. You know why? Because Christians give so many people shit for it. Oh, you weren't a real Christian. Oh, get the fuck out of my house. You're not my son anymore. They make it this way. If it was just like anything else, if it was like, you know, I got a new job, you'd just be like, oh, hey, I don't think I got anymore. But it's not like that. It's a charged statement. It makes it highly difficult once you actually get into the situation. You can think about it and expect it all damn day long, but whenever it happens, that's a totally different thing. Whenever you come out to your parents or your aunt or anybody, they're not expecting it. It's a totally different thing. They could think about it. They could have their suspicions about you and fuck, let them. But having their suspicions is totally different from them hearing the words out of your mouth, you know, as they drop their glass and your mouth falls to the floor or however they react. But this is basically the advice that I have. Wait it out. Spend some time learning. Find some new interests and hobbies. And as generic as that shit is, I'm putting it in this and I'm meaning it so much because whenever it comes to this, like this is, it, it's going to be a new life. You're going to try different things. You are going to become a different person. Everybody is constantly becoming a new person, regardless of if you believe in God or not. But changing the God belief, that changes it even further. Just like any Christian watching may know, once you become a born again Christian, once you invite Christ into your life, Everything changes. So does it happen whenever you kick Christ out of your heart. So does it happen when you just don't buy it anymore. So does it happen when you're assaulted by a pastor and you don't know how to feel about this also good religion, but yet you still believe. There's so much nuance to this whole talk that this is why it pisses me off that people are like, oh, you weren't a real Christian. There's 
so naive. They're so ignorant. I'm almost, I'm almost jealous. Because they don't see any way for a Christian to not be a Christian. And if they admitted it, that it's possible, then they'd be stuck with thinking that it could happen to them. And that's the last thing they want to think about. Which is why they always point a finger at you just in case they tell you, oh, you aren't a real Christian. You didn't really believe, you didn't know Christ. Well, yeah, technically. But I thought, I fucking thought I did. Technically, they're right. We don't, we didn't know Christ, but we don't think they did it either. <laughs> you know. But, you know, those things can really hit you hard. Especially whenever you're going through these, this grieving process, this angry process, this process of, well, what do I want to do with my life? This opens up to so many more things. What do I, what do I believe? What are my convictions about things? What do I think about this? You really can expand. Because maybe beforehand, evolution was just some leftist, liberal hoax that the devil wants to put in your head so that he can disprove God. Now you're an atheist. You've heard about this evolution stuff, but hey, let's look into it. You're open to a lot of possibilities. I don't know you enough to give you more help. See, if you were my friend, it would be easy. I'd, I'd know exactly where to take you and exactly what to do to at least not make everything perfect, but to at least help and to help you on it. So if you ever need to reach out to me, leave a comment below. Let me know that you're up here. Actually, just hit me back up on Reddit. I'll open up a line of communication between us. But as anyone else who knows following this channel and who communicate with me, sometimes it's hard to get a hold of me. Sometimes I don't really text back for a while. So there's that side of it too. But I also want to uh, reach that out, that invitation out to anybody, not just the OP in that Reddit post. You know, what are you going through with your deconversion? Maybe you're going through something I haven't even heard of. Something that I couldn't even relate to. Something that you know other people would do, uh, would do good from. Maybe you have resources. Maybe the Freedom From Religion Foundation has helped you a lot and you want to push, the, push them, you know? Like, push them out there, like, prop them up. Like, hey, go check this place out. I'm trying to think of a word, but it won't pop into my head. Let me know below. Like, please, you know, talk about your deconversion. Not just that, you're a Christian. How much did your life change when you invited Christ into your heart? I think there's a lot of change regardless of if you flip the switch on or flip the switch off. And in this video's case, this is towards people who switched it off, but there's a lot of change. And you see the same pattern in the change from going towards Jesus while also divorcing Jesus. It's really interesting, but once you feel it, once you go through it, it's a hard process. <laughs> Lucky are the people who grew up and realize they didn't believe at like the age of like seven and they're like fuck that shit i'm tired of your church oh! you know <laughs> when you grow up with it and whenever it's as serious to you as like yourself or your own mother when you love jesus more than anything it's it's hard getting rid of that there's so there's so many other facets to losing your faith and becoming an atheist than this post even went on. These are just, these are just five points. There's hundreds of them. That's somebody's life right now. It's a lot of people's lives right now. And you know, well, you know, a lot, a lot of lives could be worse. I get that. It could always be worse. I don't really like you know, saying that because, you know, what you're going through, I think matters and is valid. But I hope my advice helps in some way or helps you think about something differently and get you to, uh, do something that might overall benefit this whole experience. Whether you come out or not as asexual or atheist or this year, or whether or not you have asshole family members who cut you off, you know, I hope, I hope this turns out good for you. And if you don't hit me up, please come back in a year and let me know how it all went. Be, I'd love to do a follow-up video on this. Either way, this video has been long enough. Hope you're all doing a fan-fucking-tastic rest of your day. If you enjoyed this video and happen to watch it, I want you to do something for me. I want you to let me know down below in the comments and I'll, uh, I'll give you a secret emoji. How about that? Yeah. You want a secret emoji? Then subscribe.